So now we're going to move on to condensate return. Uh, why do we want to return condensate? Well, it has a high heat content, 20 to 30 percent of the steam total heat. Uh, we want to reduce uh, water treatment chemical costs, reduce uh, water costs and uh, percentage of blowdown in our boilers. Condensate disposable, uh, disposal costs are avoided. Better control of TDS, which is total dissolved solids in a boiler, and better control of the water level in a boiler. Reduced environmental emissions and uh, increased fuel savings. So returning condensate back to the system helps us save energy and sa save other costs. Uh, TDS, what TDS stands for is total dissolved solids. So these are just uh, solids in um, suspension inside the water. So inside of a boiler, we have water that's heated up and turns to steam, goes out into our system. Steam goes up, the heavier particles fall back down. We have uh, total, m most boilers will have an acceptable level of TDS. Many smaller boilers will accept around 3,500 parts per million. We don't want to have too high of a total dissolved solid rate because that will cause priming and carryover and uh, just poor heat transfer. But we don't want the uh, total dissolved solid to be too low because then we'd be blowing down the boiler all the time and just causes energy losses. So there's two types of blowdown. There's the surface blowdown and the, the bottom blowdown. So bottom blowdown and surface, also known as continuous blowdown. So the surface blowdown or continuous controls the amount of t total dissolved solids in, in suspension inside your, the boiler's water. And then the bottom blowdown is something that you do uh, a couple times a day. And it just gets rid of the um, accumulated debris that can build up in the mud drum at the bottom of the boiler. So TDS, when we refer to TDS, we're talking about uh, total dissolved solids. Do you mind closing the door, please? Thank you. So Shipco Pumps has a variety of different types of pumps. We have um, the Model D is probably the more, most common one, just for regular condensate handling applications. The Model P has a small propeller at the eye of the impeller. And that's why, where they get the P from. <coughs> Model T is a turbine type of pump, which is not very common, but they still make it, I guess, for some people that still want to have a turbine pump. Uh, Model AWF are for very high flows. It's a multi-stage multi pump. And then the Model U is for under, underground, so sump pump applications where the, the motor is way up high and the inlet to the pump is down uh, several feet away from the motor. And the, the reason we have these are for sump pump applications, but um, during our ship co training, they started telling us that in uh, Manhattan, if you, in case you didn't know, Manhattan is one of the biggest steam systems in the world because all the tall buildings that you see on TV are mostly heated by steam, just like in Toronto. Toronto, most of the buildings are heated by steam. They have district steam, so they have uh, steam that's created at a central point and then distributed throughout the city. So in Toronto they have N-Wave, in New York City they have um, uh, Con Edison, named after Thomas Edison because Edison was the first person to conceive of a centralized um, power plant. So back in 1874, okay I'm getting a little bit nerdy here, but uh, I read a book a few years ago called The Power Makers, The History of Steam and Electricity in North America, and it was the, uh, basically the biography of George Westinghouse and Thomas Edison. Edison. So if you ever have a chance to read the book, it's really fascinating, because it tells you the whole story of um, Nikolai uh, Tesla, the inventor of AC current versus DC. At the beginning, Edison was using DC current, which the problem there is that the power would uh, fade away so fast. They, they couldn't uh, send the power very far down the, um, uh, the high tension lines because DC current uh, kind of dissipates very quickly, whereas the AC current can travel over many, many different, uh, many miles. So, Con Edison was the first person to put a centralized heating plant 
or um, power plant within New York City, and because there's waste steam, they could use the heat as well. So that's where the name Con Edison comes from. Um, anyways, so that's kind of a long story. And um, back to the reason why I was talking about that, you know, a couple of years ago, there was Hurricane Sandy that caused all kinds of problems in the Northeast, in New Jersey, New York City. A lot of ba basements flooded out. Well, a lot of the buildings have their mechanical rooms in the basement. So if you have a condensate pump and there's a whole bunch of seawater that comes into your basement, well, then you have a big problem on your hands because it fries the motor and then you can't pump your condensate. So now they've started making pumps like this. Motor elevated off the floor. So that way, if the basement does get flooded, they won't have a problem of burning out your motors. <coughs> so just briefly, uh, pump model D, generally for 200 degrees Fahrenheit or less, but check the performance curve. Net positive suction head required. I'm not going to get into that. It's, it's a very, you can spend a whole day talking about NPSH, NPSHR. It's just the amount of pressure required for the pump to operate properly. So it's generally for lower temperatures, but we have to make sure that the pump is still operating on its curve. Uh, impellers are all cast bronze. We don't have any plastic impellers. All the Shipco pumps have cast bronze impellers. Impellers are trimmed to the actual load required. They have wearing rings as standards. So on the, the impeller, there's a wearing ring, so the, wear, the ring wears before the impeller does, so you can change the wearing ring before you have to change the entire impeller. It's just a cost-saving feature. And Shipco only uses industry standard motors, so you don't have to have a specialized motor that you have to go back to Shipco to buy. You can buy anybody's motor as long as it fits on the frame of the pump. Horizontal suction is flanged, so they have either horizontal or vertical. Typically, it comes into uh, space required or a customer preference. And then model P is for higher, higher temperatures or higher pressures. They also use them, they told us, in, um, in Denver because the, they're way up high. They're 5,000 feet up off the ground. Everybody knows that the hockey players that travel to play against the Avalanche have trouble breathing in Denver and the football players that play against the Broncos always complain of it's hard to catch your breath because if you're not used to higher elevations, uh, there's, uh, the pressure is much less. So the boiling point is lower. So the, the lower the pressure, the, higher, the lower the boiling point. So that's, that's why they start using these Model P pumps in higher ele elevations because they go to boiling point much quicker than at sea level. So this is basically the Shipco pump or Shippensburg Pump Company lineup of condensate pumps. We have very simple ones. This is a cast iron body. You also have stainless steel just off the shelf, shelf type of deal. We carry a lot of these on our shelf in our warehouse back in Vaughan. Or you have a more specialized version with a control panel built in. It has an HOA switch, which stands for hands off auto or hands off run. It depends on the panel manufacturer. They call it different things. Two different motors, so that gives you backup in case one fails or it gives you that much extra capacity. In this case, there's two separate float switches. You can also have a mechanical alternator instead of two separate float switches. There's a steam-powered pump, and there's a very big pump. It's probably as long as one of these tables and uh, holds several gallons of condensate, and your pumps are on the side here, and it comes with the panel. So these pumps, you can have them with a panel or without panel. It's, it's up to up to your uh, preference depending on customer or if you have a good electrician that can make your own panel then you don't need to get one from us but it's just it's just for ease of use you just have to bring power to the panel and uh, connect the pumps up and then you're away you go uh, shipco only uses 3500 rpm impellers the reason is this slide kind of tells you why uh, 1750 impeller is twice the diameter and four times as heavy. So obviously if it's heavier, it takes more power to run it. And because condensate pumps are on and off, there's a lot of uh, surge power to, to get the pump rolling. And you know, that it just with a 1750 RPM, there's, there's that much more power required to get the pump. And, and because they're bigger, they're also more, a lot more expensive to replace if they need to be replaced. <clears throat> One thing about uh, centrifugal pumps, 
Uh, never put a strainer upstream of the centrifugal pump. This is straight from the in installation and operating manuals of Shipco. They'll tell you not to put a strainer if it's a vein type centrifugal pump. The reason is, is that the veins are very far apart. They're actually, um, you could probably fit a, an entire finger inside of these veins. If, this is not actual size, of course, but if you ha held one in your hand, you could probably fit your entire index in between the veins. So there's not a lot of space uh, small areas where dirt can collect and having a strainer upstream of one of these is just an extra maintenance point that doesn't get checked enough so the strainer can get plugged and cause your pump to not operate. So with the centrifugal pump the condensate comes through the center or the water depend whatever type the pump whatever the pump is doing the water comes in through the center the eye of the impeller and just gets slung around it's the opposite of a propeller impeller draws the water in, the propeller pushes the boat away. So if you look at it that way, the same type of idea, but um, different purposes. So if we go to um, Shipco has this a really nice feature called virtual pump. And if we go to the pump section, we can see exactly, oops, I just closed that. We can see exactly how one of these types of pumps work. So on startup, on initial startup, the chambers inside the pump must be filled with water before the motor is turned on. These chambers include the suction and discharge cavities of the pump along with the area in and around the impeller up to the mechanical seal which is up here. And as water fills the pump suction housing, the air inside the pump is pushed out through the discharge and the bleed lines. So most, um, most any of these condensate pumps, whether it's a Shipco or somebody else's, will have this bleed line and that has to be left open. It just helps vent the pump to get rid of the air. And then as power is sent to the motor that sits on top of the shaft, then that causes the impeller to spin around. It sucks in the water here, so that's why they call it the suction side, and that's the discharge side. And if you look at it from the top view, the suction is here, and the water just gets flung around and out. Uh, cavitation danger. Uh, cavitation can happen if you have many leaking steam traps, or if you have steam entering the, the housing of the pump. Anybody who has an above-ground pool, I have one of those, and if you get air into your pump, you know the damage it can cause and the noise it can make. Well, the same thing with steam. A pump can't pump steam, so if steam gets into the chamber or if the water coming into the pump is way too high for the impeller, it can turn back into steam and cause cavitation. And cavita cavitation sounds like somebody shoveling rocks into your pump. You'll hear a, a really grinding, annoying sound. So cavitation is not good. It will damage your pump very quickly and will damage the motor as well. So power off, the pump stops spinning and the flow stops. <coughs> and then I'll just quickly show you the, the P. All the pieces are the same except for the added impeller or uh, propeller. So the air gets exhausted just like the other one. Power turns on and that little propeller begins. So as water flows through the suction housing of the pump the first stage propeller, a rotating fan-like mechanism with blades, pushes it into the center of the eye. And the second stage impeller, a roti rotating disc with a set of vanes, pushes the, the water out of the chamber. So same type of deal, works exactly the same way. Be careful of cavitation. And then uh, I'll just show you the difference with a turbine pump. It operates pretty much the same way to get rid of the water, but the, the big difference is you notice how all these little um, veins are very much closer together. And in actual fact, it is like I took a picture of one, uh, maybe should have put it on the slide, but uh, you, you can't even get your fingernail in between the veins. So if it's a turbine pump, then you need a strainer upstream. If it's a, just a regular centrifugal pump, a uh, strainer is not required and it's not even recommended. So again, I, I can't tell you why they still make them, but I guess some people have a preference for them. And how does that all fit together? Well, if you take one of those P pumps or uh, D pumps and you put them together with a condensate pump, 
This is how it all comes together. So the flow condensate comes back from your building, from all your steam traps that are taking care of the condensate. The steam goes through your building, condenses, the condensate flows into the, the chamber. And uh, anytime you have an electric pump, it has to be vented. Absolutely has to be vented. Because if you don't vent it, the temperature will go up. It will pressurize your tank. It's not a pressure vessel, so they cannot be vented. Uh, they cannot be pressurized. They're not meant to be pressurized. And the higher the pressure, the higher the temperature. So if you drive the pressure up, you high, drive the temperature up, you will cause cavitation in the pump, and you will destroy the mechanical seal, and then eventually destroy the pump itself. The water level rises up, and your float rises up with it. As the float rises up, it makes contact. There's a contactor inside your float switch. In this case, we have a simplex pump. One, one cool feature of the ship co-pumps is that the simplex will have a blank flange right there. So in the field, if you decide to make it a duplex down the road, you can order in the pump and just slap it on. So that way you're, of course, you have to change the float switch to mechanical alternator or add in a second float switch, but it can be converted in the field to a duplex. So in this case, our condensate level has risen up and uh, the travel of your pump can be adjusted with this ring. There's two screws, there's two set screws on either end. You can actually adjust the, the float travel. So as the float rises up and hits its highest level, there's a contact inside that uh, brings power to the pump activates the, uh, brings power to the motor and activates the pump. Float level goes down and the contact is open, it shuts the pump off and the flow stops. And that's it for condensate pumps.